Close. Please stand. Start pulling. Good morning. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant <clears throat> that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons.
A reading from the second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Bala Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up, on, brought up the ark of God from the house of Obadiah to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people. The whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. The earth, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in its holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said it, was, it is Elijah, and others it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother, his brother Philip's wife, <clears throat> because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful, lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you even a half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want, to be, I want it to be given to me at once, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guest, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> so, y'all don't know this, but I hate dancing. I'm not good at it at all. Like, I'm no good at it. Um, Annie's tried a few times to get me to dance. I'm stink at it. I won't do it. I'm just not very good at it. Don't like it. And so, <clears throat> I have a hard time sometimes with these passages about dancing, right? But we get two very different dancing stories in the Old Testament lesson from Samuel and in the Gospel lesson today. Two very different dancing stories. You know, um, in, in, the, in the Samuel lesson, they've gone and pulled the ark up, and they're bringing the ark. And out in front of the ark, David dances and rejoices in front of the ark. And this dance is one that is one filled with joy and celebration. And, and it's, a, it's a dance of gratefulness, and it's a dance that recognizes that they're in the presence of God. That's a dance that all of us would like to do, right? Like, even I might even step up to the plate for that dance, I, you know? And I have had a few moments in my lifetime where I've been moved to, to joyous celebration throughout my whole body. Uh, when we won a junior college national championship in 1998, I celebrated for about five seconds. It was really exciting, but I was really tired. We ran like 95 offensive plays that game. I was exhausted. But that's a different story. <clears throat> but he's dancing. It's this joyous dance. And then in the New Testament, we get this dance from... Herodias' daughter, Herodias. And, um, and it's a dance that pleases everyone who is, who, is, who is present. But the aim and the purpose of these two dances and the outcomes of these two dances are very different. And we learn that as, as David comes into the town, that he's despised for dancing. He's despised because this response to God's presence in his life that he is responding to with, within his life, physically, is causing others to despise him. And there's some of that same kind of behavior going on in Herod's court. It's not that people are despising Herod, or that people are despising Herodias for dancing, but that her mother despises John the Baptist. For much of the same reason that David is despised. David seems to know something in his dance. He seems to be saying something that my body is expressing God's presence in some real and meaningful way. And John's body did the same thing when he stood and criticized Herod for not being lawful in his marriage to his brother's wife. And his brother's wife despised him for using his body that way. In a, in a, in a, in a sense, you could say that John was dancing as well, even though he may not have been Dancing, he was a wild man, so there's no telling. I mean, he, he may have been dancing while he was preaching. Who knows? But in a sense, here we have these people who are using their bodies, John and David, in a way that causes others to despise them. They're using their bodies in a way that are, are, that are telling a story of who God is, how God is moving, and people around them despise them. Annie has this thing hanging on the wall at the house, and it says that <clears throat> hope is the ability to hear the music of the future, and faith is having the courage to dance to it now. Hope is the ability to hear the music of the future, and faith is having the courage to dance to it now. David and John both can hear the melody of the future. They can hear it. They see that God is pointing them into a future that's different than the world around them may be planning for, but then nonetheless, that's where God is pointing them to. And so they better get busy dancing to the tune that God's playing if they want to be ready when that future arrives. Right? Right? And the other part of the story, though, is we get Herodias' dance. And the intention behind it doesn't seem to be the same intention. It doesn't seem to be one that points towards God's future, but instead points towards her own desires. After this has happened, and she's danced, and she's done this thing, and everyone's so impressed with it, and Herod says, oh my goodness, this is so impressive. Let me show you how. And now here's Herod doing his dance, right? Look at the dance he does. He says... Oh, that's so beautiful. I'll give you whatever you ask for, up to half of my kingdom. Half of it. Anything, just ask for it. 
And so she runs to her mother, and her mother does a different dance. Look how she's dancing. Ooh, this is my chance. This is my chance to get John. This is my chance right now. Go tell him you want the head of John. And that's not good enough for the daughter, apparently, because she goes back and she says, not only do I want the head of John, but I want it on a platter. I want you to bring it into the banquet that we just had. I want it to be served on the table. I want it to be dessert. It absolutely is gross. It's supposed to be. Mark is telling the story this way so the people will understand how grotesque this act really is. How unsettling this act really is. That this isn't how people are supposed to behave. But yet, this is the dance that Herod and his wife and his daughter are doing. But it's not the dance that we're called to. And it never will be. And any time we see human beings dancing to their own tune, any time we see human beings pointing towards their own future, any time we see human beings trying to build up their own power, their own wealth, their own prestige, their own ego, it always leads to destruction. Every single time. This is the arc of the entire biblical narrative. Go all the way back to the garden. They're dancing with God in perfect union with God in the garden. God says, all you have to do to keep dancing with me this way is don't eat that and eat this. And what do they do? Ooh, this dance would be better if we ate this. That's the whole narrative. And then God over and over and over again says, I'm going to put things back the way they belong so that we can all dance to the same tune. It's going to happen. We're going to get there. And apparently God's saying this even in the face of something as grotesque is what we see in today's Gospel lesson. In the face of murder and human destruction and decay and death and chaos, <coughs> excuse me, God says I'm going to continue to play my music. I'm going to continue to invite you into this faith walk into this dance of love and grace, and we will indeed get there. We will get there. We will get there even when my own disciples who are following Christ don't do the dance the right way. We will get there. I don't know if you caught it, but at the very end of this lesson, it says that when his disciples, that's John's disciples, heard that he had been killed, they came and got his body and they buried it. That is not an accident. That is there so that you recognize that when Jesus dies, his own disciples did not bury his body. It wasn't his disciples. They ran off in fear. It was other followers of Jesus, but it was not his closest disciples who buried him. This is no accident. This is a foreshadowing in Mark's gospel pointing towards the reality of who Christ is and reminding us that God's tune is brighter and bigger and better than any tune that we can imagine and inviting us to do the dance to that tune now. Inviting us into a life that says, sometimes if I dance to God's, to God's future, if I dance to His music, if I dance to the hope of God's future, people may despise me. It may make some people upset with me. Some people may look at me and wonder, why am I doing what I'm doing? But that when we faithfully step into the life of Christ, it calls us into this mystical dance. It calls us into this life where we're hearing God's call for the future, where we're hearing the melody of God's future, and we start moving to it. When we start responding to it. And when we do that, we start looking more and more like the people that God has made us to be. We start looking more and more like the body of Christ. And it doesn't matter what we face as long as we continue to faithfully move towards the future that God is calling us to, as long as we faithfully continue to do that dance, it doesn't matter how ugly, how sad, how hateful, how, how, how low it may appear that we have, the world is around us, how bad the situation we are in might be, we can trust that indeed God will pull us through that. That's the whole narrative of Jesus that not even the grave can stop what God is doing in the future. That not even the grave can prevent God's people from being who God has called them to be. 
So this day, I pray that all of us will focus intently is what is the music that we hear God playing in the future? Where do we hear him calling us? Where do we feel God pulling us to? Where do we hear what God has got in store for us? And then like the colic today suggests, the one that said, God, give them the strength and the power to do the things that they ought to do. That's a, that's a collect that's praying that God will strengthen us to do the dance that he's calling us to. Now, these dances are metaphorical. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not really going to dance for you. But it's a dance nonetheless. It's the dance of our life, and it's a dance that calls us to see what God is doing in the future and invites us to do it right now. And when we do it, it may make others uncomfortable. It may even be hard for us. But it's the only life that we can live where we know that we're dancing to the music that God is playing for us. And it's truly the only way for us to be joyful, regardless of what we face, regardless of how difficult the life around us may seem like it is. And that's really good news, because it is really easy to get stuck in ourselves and to get stuck in the bad news that we often hear over and over again in our own lives. But the good news of God's kingdom is that we're all invited into the dance, and all we have to do is listen for the music. Amen. Together, let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People is Form 3, and it's found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we may all may be one. Grant that every member of the church, especially for the congregations of the Companion Diocese in Tohoku in Japan, may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, James, our retired bishop, Ashley, our priest, and all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on the Moore family, Kathleen, Judith, Mary, William, Bonaventure, David H., Brenda, Mary, Skeeter, Ellen, Christine, Mark, Mike, Liz, the Diocesan Search Committee for our 12th Bishop, Sally O, Sarah, Keith, Mike, Gwen, Lexi, Randy, Candice, Madison, Gala, and the rest of those on our long-term prayer list, which can be found in our emailed newsletter, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially 
Juan Mora, Anna Mora, and Juan Mora Jr. Eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for your saints who have entered into your joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for you to watch over all those serving in our country, especially Freeman, Jude, Aaron, Brian, Ethan, Jake, Landon, Dale, Christian, Tanis, Austin, Reese, Denise, Edward, Matthew, Denver, Jamie, Chance, James, Brady, and Jeremy. We give you thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating birthdays, James, as well as those celebrating anniversaries. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, big guy. Peace, honey. Peace, Edgar. Peace at home. Peace, sir. Well, good morning, everybody. So I, I subbed the past two weeks at St. Augustine's, and what I've discovered is that when I do that, I leave my notes for my announcements on my door. And so guess where they're hanging right now? So I don't have them. I've, if, so if there's announcements, I forget, I'm sorry. But a few quick ones I'll remind you of. We are doing a, um, we're doing a, a, a Wednesday night Bible study, and we've started in on the book of Acts, and we're using the N.T. Wright book, Acts for Everyone. It's a two-volume book. Um, we, we covered the rest of chapter one this past week, so we're still well at the beginning, and you can easily jump in and join us, and it's been a really good conversation. Um, N.T. Wright, if you're not familiar with him, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I like the way he talks about a lot of the New Testament stuff, um, and he's, it's very easy to follow, but it's been good conversation. We're going to follow all the way through N.T. Wright's um, Acts for Everyone until we finish it. So I can't tell you how long that's going to go, but we're just going to keep doing that on Wednesday nights until we're done. So um, we're, we're looking at a chapter a week, but our pace may not cover a chapter a week. It's sometimes, you know, the conversation doesn't let us go a whole chapter in a week. So we'll go however far we can. So um, <clears throat> other announcements. Beth, am I forgetting anything? Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanks, Beth. See, Beth is my walking announcement. She just keeps it all in there, y'all. Um, the men's group has started gathering for coffee again on Thursday mornings at 8.30 over at Jets. So if you want to come and join us, uh, it's really just an opportunity to sit around and, and tell some jokes and have a good time. Uh, there's a couple of the guys from the neighborhood who come and join us as well. And I think they're there every morning. I think we're joining them, actually, but however that works out. Um, they're hilarious. They're a lot of fun. And so if you want to come and join us, please feel free to do so. And then... Um, I believe that's it, guys, in the way of announcements. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. I know we have a few, so if you're celebrating a birthday and anniversary this coming week, please stand. Yeah, we got you, buddy. We weren't, we weren't going anywhere. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the many blessings of this life. We thank you in this moment especially for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray that you would be with them as they begin another year. Give them a sense of your love and grace wherever they may be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon all of them now and remain with them always. Amen. Happy birthday, guys, and anniversaries. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. Pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in its sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Patrick, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold 
to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and if you don't have in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep your everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep your everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Oh, hey, pretty girl. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all the days of your beautiful life. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting life. Together, let us stand and use the prayer at the bottom of page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. to the living God all praise I almost forgot we have a coffee hour again next door in the parish hall, so please come next door and help us um, eat whatever treats are over there, because I know there will be some, um, so please stop by. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hey, brother, how are you? Get that off.